In this video, we're going to take a look at geometric series and how you find the sum of them. Now, the general term of a geometric sequence is the nth term is a r to the n minus 1. So, if you wrote out a comma r comma r squared, etc., that's the sequence. The series is sum of all that. So, the sum of the first n terms would be a plus the second term plus the third term. Notice you're multiplying by a common ratio to get the next term each time. Now the nth term would be this a r to the n minus 1. The term before it would be a r to the n minus 2. Uh, if you divided this by r, you would get, uh, you're really subtracting ones in the exponent, that's why it would be n minus 2, and then n minus 3 for the one before that, and n minus 4 for the one before that, etc. Just like you multiply by r to go in this direction from first to second to third to fourth term, etc. Now, one, so that's how you would write out a geometric series. Uh, it's just the sum of the geometric sequence. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all this by r. So s sub n multiplied by r would be r times s sub n. Now, when I multiply this by r, that would be a r. And I'm going to write it above the next term so that I have like terms on top of one another. So when I multiply a r by another r, we'll get a r squared. So I'll write that above the a r squared and then ar squared times another r would be ar cubed, etc. Right on down to the very last term, if you were to multiply ar to the n minus 1 by an r, and so that would actually look like this. So we're multiplying by an r to the first. So when you add this exponent 1 to n minus 1, the 1 and negative 1 add to 0, and that's why you just get an n to the first power here. So that's why it's a r to the n on the end. If you were to multiply this term by r, when you add the n minus 2 and the 1, you get n minus 1. So that's, a, that's why that's a r to the n minus 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract. We're going to take the top and subtract the top row minus the, uh, the bottom of the second row. So it'll be r, r s sub n minus the s sub n. Now notice what happens when you subtract here. This a r minus a r, well, they subtract to 0. And same with the a r squared and the a r squared next. In fact, all of this and all of this are the same. So that all subtracts to 0. So basically, we're really just left with this term minus this term. So that's why it's a r to the n, the one in the very end there, minus the a. So, now we're trying to find a formula for s sub n. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to factor an s sub n out on the left. So, because that's a common factor here. So I would have s sub n times r minus 1. Remember when you factor a s sub n out of a negative s sub n, there'd just be a negative 1 on the end. And I factor an a out on the right. So it'll be a times r to the n minus 1. So in order to solve for s sub n, the sum of n terms, I would divide both sides by r minus 1. So basically, it becomes this, becomes this divided by the r minus 1. Now, this does not divide evenly this, because this is r to the n minus 1, where this just is r to the first minus 1. So there is no dividing out there. So the sum of a geometric series and this is what the geometric series looks like, a plus a r plus a r squared, etc., to the nth term. The sum of the first n terms is s sub n equals a, the first term, times in brackets the common ratio to the power of n minus 1. Notice this is not in the exponent. It's r to the power of n, and then subtract 1, divided by r minus 1. This formula works for any value of r except 1. If r were 1, then this denominator would be 0, and the expression would be undefined. So that's why r cannot equal 1 here to use this series formula. So in the first example, we're asked to find the sum of the first 18 terms of this series, 5 plus 10 plus 20 plus 40, etc. So the first thing you should do is identify a, r, and n. So a would be 5. The common ratio is 2, because you're multiplying by 2 to get the next term each time. And if it's the sum of the first 18 terms, then n would be 18. And so we write down our term for our sum formula, and we're finding s18. So 5 goes in here, the ratio is 2, the uh, n value is 18, uh, minus 1 then, and over 2 minus 1, because r is 2. 
And so that works out to 1,310,715. Now, when you evaluate that, be very careful. You uh, follow the orders, uh, order of uh, order of operations here. So you have to evaluate the 2 raised to the power of 18 first. And then we'll subtract 1 from that. So that's basically what's in here. Then we would multiply that by 5 and divide by, well, the, the denominator is actually just 1. So if you divide that by 1, you get the same thing. So there's where the 1,310,715 comes from. Uh, two more examples on the uh, second page. And the second example, we're asked to find the sum of the first 45 terms of this series, 100 minus 50 plus 25 minus 12 and a half, etc. So again, identify A, R, and N. A would be 100. Now, it's you're multiplying. Notice it's going down. So the R value is just a fraction, a fraction between 0 and 1 specifically. Uh, notice if you take negative uh, 50 and divide it by the first term, the term before it, you get negative 0.5. So that's why r is negative a half. Uh, 25 divided by negative 50 would also be negative 0.5. And it's the sum of the first 45 terms, so n would be 45. So here's the sum formula for a geometric series. And so we fill in all the values. S45 would be a is 100. And then it's negative 0.5 raised to the power of 45, because n is 45, minus 1 over negative 0.5 minus 1. And so. I just simplified the denominator. Negative 0.5 minus 1 would be negative 1.5. So evaluate this. Now, notice the base is negative. So make sure you do that properly. Raise to the power of 45, and then, of course, minus 1 afterwards. So that's what's in here. And then multiply by 100, and then divide by the negative 1.5 in the denominator. So you get 66.6 .6 repeating. So that's the sum of the first 45 terms. It's 66 and 2 thirds, or 0.6 repeating. Last example, find the sum of the series 3 plus 6 plus 12 plus 24, et cetera, up to 12,288. Now what's different between example 3 and the first and second one is you don't know how many terms there are. But if we were to find which term this 12,288 is, then that's what n would be. So a would be 3. We're multiplying by 2 to go from term to term. So r is 2, but we don't know n yet. So to find n, we would use the general term formula of a geometric sequence. So the 12 to 88 is the term number, the, sorry, the term value, not the term number. So we'll fill in, fill in 12 to 88 in place of t sub n. A is 3, and the common ratio is 2. Now if we divide out the 3 here, that divided by 3 is 4,096, so that equals 2 to the power of n minus 1. So what we want to do now is find out what power to raise 2 to to get 4,096. And depending on whether you know logarithms or not, you could just try uh, large numbers. For example, 2 to the 10th is only 1,024, so we're not quite big enough. So if you do 2 to the 12th, for example, that is 4,096. So So we write 4,096 as 2 to the 12th equals the 2 to the n minus 1. The bases are the same here. So to solve n, we can equate the exponents. So we write 12 is equal to the n minus 1. So n minus 1 equals 12. So n would be 13. It's 13 that you subtract 1 from to get 12. So n is 13, so there's 13 terms. So now we can use the sum formula. And we're finding s13. So again, a is 3. Common ratio is 2, n is 13, minus 1 over 2 minus 1 again. So now, uh, when you go to evaluate this, again, make sure you're uh, following the order of operations. So we will go 2 raised to the power of 13, by, and then subtract 1, of course. So what's in here is 8191, and then we multiply that by 3. And we divide by 1. And so 
we get the 24,573. And that's the end of the video.